Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I was thinking the other day, what if I was starting to learn iOS development from scratch today? So today I'm bringing to you a full roadmap with a step-by-step -step guide of what to learn to become an iOS developer. I'm also gonna share all the courses and resources that I've personally used where you can learn all the topics mentioned on this roadmap. So why I decided to build this roadmap? You know, as I said, I was thinking the other day, what people are learning today about iOS development. And I came across this Medium article, and for disclaimer, I'm not criticizing the author whatsoever. It's just that he, he brought here a lot of good stuff, you know, a lot of topics on iOS development that are definitely relevant. But I'm thinking as a beginner's point of view. If I'm a beginner, looking at this i would probably freak out you know as you can see here there is a lot of stuff to learn so man this got me thinking well it's gotta be a easier path for a beginner to just getting in ios development you know so that's why i decided to build this roadmap this is a really simple step-by-step -step guide for you to start learning with the goal of becoming an iOS developer. So keep in mind that here I'm considering that you are not a CS degree graduate. So you don't hold a CS degree, you start from scratch, you know nothing about programming and tech in general. So this is the main goal of this roadmap. But if you hold a CS degree or if you have programming experience in another language, maybe web development, backend development, or anything else, you can skip step one and three and just go with two and four. So let's get started. First and foremost, I do believe that if you don't hold a CS degree, it's really important that you learn the computer science fundamentals. This step is really important to build the foundation knowledge that will make the next step really easier. Things like how computer works, binary, memory, how the internet works, and the basics of data structures and algorithms. All this foundational knowledge, especially data structures and algorithms, will greatly improve your problem solving skills and make you develop your computational thinking. Whether you are a beginner developer or experienced developer, never underestimate the power of these fundamentals. They are not just concepts, they are tools that will set you apart not only in iOS development but in any tech stack. Everybody must learn those fundamentals. The programming language of choice is not that important at this moment, just focus on getting a really good grasp of these concepts. Now that you learn all the foundational knowledge, this step is going to be a lot easier because it's pretty much just learn the syntax of the language. So in this step, you're going to learn Swift, you know, all the syntax that you need to code like type, uh, variables, constants, collections. So I highlighted here all the basics you need. Um, this last one is a little bit more advanced, I would call, but it's really important you know, on iOS development, especially optionals and closures. So it's pretty much the only one that is not so basic, but it's not hard either. On this step, just focus on learn the language and how to use it, how to work with it because you know Swift I consider Swift an easy and beginner friendly language but it can get really tricky so there's some nuances that I don't think you should worry about at this time next step is object oriented programming and protocol oriented programming at this point i don't believe you should go really deep on this but you should learn at least the basic you know because on ios development is used in many frameworks across all apple platforms so you need to understand at least the basics like inheritance uh, polymorphism encapsulation you know so when you are learning something new on ios uh, you see some stuff that if you don't know these concepts 
beforehand, you're not gonna get how it's working, you know, like when a class is inherited from another. Uh, keywords like override or super, you know, these concepts, at least the basics you should know because it's gonna make it easier for you to work with Apple frameworks. And the same thing for protocol-oriented programming. Apple brought to us these concepts of protocol-oriented programming back in 2015 at WWDC and is still used to this day the same concepts all across the board on iOS development. So you should definitely learn both. So now we finally get to the juice, right? So, okay, let's start step by step, point by point here. First of all, there's this really controversial topic. What should I learn first, SwiftUI or UIKit? You know, I even shared a, a short video about this that I definitely think that you should start with SwiftUI because, you know, since it's really easy to start, it's keep you, you know, happy and motivated because you see results right away. You see that you can build stuff. You can see a design and you, you can prototype and build right away. So this motivation is really important to, you know, for you to keep going. So I choose here for you to start with SwiftUI and learn all the basics, you know, the UI element, elements like buttons, toggles, etc. Stacks, list, grid, scroll view, navigation, all the basic stuff, everything you need to build any, you know, user interface. Next, we have MVVM. So there is many architectural patterns like MVC, MVVM, MVP, MVVMC, VAP, Viper, etc. But for SwiftUI, is it still common sense that we use MVVM because it's kind of the nature of the declarative programming. So it's easier to work with declarative programming. So I think it's a good way to start with MVVM. So we'll learn how it works, how the separation of concerns works and how to use it, how to apply it. Of course, data flow and learn how to work with bindable, binding state, state object, observed object environment, etc. I think you should learn everything how it was done before macros and after macros. Because you know, you can get a job where you use SwiftUI, but are you still supporting iOS 14? So we need to learn how to work with observable objects, state object, and so on. So I believe you should learn how it's done since SwiftUI 2.0 and beyond. Next point is data persistence. So I put here Swift data, user defaults, basics of file system, core data, and keychain. Core data, I put just the basics because kind of difficult to learn. And to be honest with you, all my career, I never used that word in any work. I've used just once on a personal project, but that was it, you know, but I think it's good to you to know the basics at least. Keychain as well, I hardly use it, but it's good to know because it might be. And user defaults, I use all the time, so it's very important. And Swift Data is the new kit on the playground, right? So I think you all should learn and that's it. Next, we have networking. So networking is a big piece of this puzzle. It's really, really important that you learn really well how to work with APIs and making API calls. So we should learn about the general idea of REST. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. We're allow sessions that is the Apple framework to make API calls. So about how to make an API call, we should learn the callback based approach and also a sync await because you will use both for sure. So the basics of threading in GCD. GCD is an Apple framework that manages those threads and Codable and JSON parse. So you need to learn how to work with Codable so you can get a JSON response and parse as a Swift object. Next, we have Git and GitHub. So it's really important so you can keep track of the version of your app and we will enable you to work in collaboration with other developers. So this is crucial. And last but not least, you should learn at least the basics of UIKit, you know, because as I said in another short video that most companies still use UIKit. So I think definitely you should learn. So I'll put here MVC design pattern. There is better solutions, better patterns for UIKit, but I put MVC because it's easier to start and learn about a little bit of each, you know, stored boards, ship files, and and programmatic UI. In my experience, most companies, especially big ones, use it programmatic UI rather than storyboard. So I think it's really important 
for you to at least get the basics and know your way around it. I didn't put Objective-C here because I believe if you need to use Objective-C in a project it would be just minor, you know, adjustments, so minor stuff. You're not gonna build from ground up an Objective-C project, so that's why I don't is relevant here. Talking about myself, I never learned Objective-C, but I still was able to modify and fix Objective-C files at work, so you can learn on the fly what you need. With this, we wrap up our roadmap and now I would like to share with you all the resources and courses I used to learn all of those things. I did a lot more courses and study a lot more resources, but here I want to curate for you the ones that I believe are the best resources and especially free resource. There's only one resource here that is paid, but you can get deals from time to time that make it really inexpensive. So let's get to it. I'm going to share with you six resources that I believe are among the best free resources out there. On this list, one of them is pay, but uh, I will get to that in a moment. The first two resources will cover the computer science fundamentals and the other four are iOS specific. The first one here is How to Assess 50. It's a great course for complete beginners because it's go from binary and how computer works all the way to the basics of programming, databases and web de development. The professor is very high energy, you know, and he delivers the content in a really enjoyable way. So it's very easy to follow so you definitely should start with this one. The second one is MIT's Intro to Computer Science and Programming using Python. This one particularly is my favorite. It's one of the best Intro to Computer Science courses out there and it's free. You can take here on EDX or on YouTube. I consider this a little bit more advanced than the Harvard CS50, but it's not that hard. You can follow as a beginner. So you can see what covers here. It will cover a lot of computer science fundamentals like data structures and algorithms, algorithmic complexity, like big O notation. I don't see here object-oriented programming, but it actually covers object-oriented programming. As you can see here, this is my dashboard on EDX. As you can see here, it also covers a little bit of object-oriented programming. And yeah, this is a great one. Next, we have the first course on iOS. It's a new demo course by Dr. Angela Yu. This is by far the first course on iOS you should take. I know it's paid, but you can easily get deals from time to time and get this course for $10 or so. It covers pretty much all you need from the Swift programming language, networking, Swift UI, UKIT, you name it. I would say if you couple this course with two good portfolio projects, you are set to a junior iOS developer position for sure. There's a lot of good courses on iOS introductory courses, but this one is the one to go for sure. The next one are tutorials shared by Apple itself. They are really well put together and you can learn UI kit or Swift UI. And we have here everything you need to build user interfaces, navigation, networking, persistence. There's a lot of good content here. And it's really well organized. I like these resources very much, but it's not beginner friendly, I would say. You need to have some Swift experience to follow this one, but after you took Angela's course, this is going to be a piece of cake. So these are really good resources as well. This last one is my personal favorite. It's Stanford CS 193P. This is a course taught by Paul Hergert. I hope I'm not misspelling his name, but he's from Stanford and the teaching style of this guy, it's just excellent, you know. He, he has a really nice way of breaking things in small pieces and then put everything together, you know, in a very elegant way. Uh, this last one was uh, fall 2021. It, it's taught in SwiftUI, but you can find this same course taught in YKit as well. So you definitely should check out both if you have time, if you can. I wouldn't say that's really easy to follow. He goes really deep into the concept, so make sure that you are a little bit far in your journey to take this one, but I definitely recommend it. The last one is not mandatory, but would be good if you can watch. It's WWDC 2015 talk about protocol-oriented programming. It's an old talk from 2015, but the concept didn't change, you know? 
He explains everything about protocol-oriented programming, what problems it solves, how it compares to object-oriented programming, and so on, how it's used on Apple frameworks. It's a really good talk. I definitely recommend you to watch it. And it's pretty much it. Of course, there's a lot more resources that I took, that I watched over the years, but I believe with this, that I presented, you have everything you need to start your career as an iOS developer. Of course, you need to, you know, build your portfolio, start to share content, do other stuff to kickstart your career. But learning wise, I believe you have everything you need here. All right. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I will link below all the links for the resources and I see you in the next one. Bye bye.